Hi, I'm Stephen Majors uh, for the Alliance for Regenerative Medicine. I'm here today with George Eastwood, the CEO of the Emily Whitehead Foundation. George, welcome to Arm Studios. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, just start off and tell us, you know, many are familiar with the Emily Whitehead story. Um, how did the foundation get started? Uh, yeah, great question. Uh, first pediatric CAR-T patient, Emily's story, incredibly well known. You know, the genesis of the foundation was Tom Carey and our founding board member, Jody, uh, another uh, parent of a cancer survivor from the Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania area, sitting around a table and with the success of their children had saying, we, we have to do more. Uh, so they founded the Emily Whitehead Foundation, really expanded the reach of the story beyond just in the news to help more patients, to help more people have the same outcomes as the Whiteheads had. And how long has the foundation been around now? Yeah, it's a, about eight years since founding and been growing ever since, really with a, a skeleton crew of volunteers and parents through the first few years, uh, but hitting its stride uh, over the last few years in, in growth due to attending conferences like ARM, Facilitate, and others, really built a following within the cell and gene therapy space that inspires patients, inspires scientists, and, and even myself coming over from the for-profit world. Perhaps it was at ARM seven or eight years ago when Tom gave his first talk. And really echoing that sentiment, I asked for years and years, how could I do more before eventually joining the board as board chair about two years ago and then stepping in about a year ago to lead the foundation uh, through some strategic redirection to support more patients, enable access, and really meet the ethos of what Tom and Carrie uh, set out to do. And so what are your main priorities right now? Where is the foundation headed in the future? And are you just U.S. or are you also Europe or global? Yeah, you know, there's, there's global reach and presence, but really putting the right board together through industry veterans and others to assess where we can fill the gaps within the cell and gene therapy space. Uh, it was originally founded through running of events, raising funds, and then giving back to research. You know, there just wasn't enough in pediatric cancer research. But over the past eight years, uh, we've seen that funding grow at other institutions. And we, as I mentioned, we see where the passion where Tom and Carrie is around access to these clinical trials, uh, connecting patients to trials, giving the information, and, and even just the hope to patients that have seen Emily's story. So that's you know, spread globally through talks that Tom has given. Uh, you'll see him at the FDA ODAC hearing, making senators tear up in the approval of Kim Raya. He's spoken at the European Parliament, I think uh, through invite with ARM uh, in the past. But how can we expand that reach beyond what Tom's able to do with his full-time job? That's where we're, we're looking now. How do we continue to expand that reach and inspire patients and build the right programs that, that are needed to get either to clinical trials or even commercially approved therapies? There's lots of gaps in that that we're assessing now and, and looking to build out. And so in your mind, uh, 10 years from now, if the foundation is, is successful in reaching its goals, what would that look like? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we're, I think we're looking at the numbers about 400,000 pediatric cancer patients diagnosed each year. And the foundation's goal really uh, at its highest level is to raise awareness. But how do we measure that awareness? How do we, how do we know we're growing? So 10 years from now, we're hoping that there's approved therapies for more pediatric childhood cancers, and, and even looking to expand our reach, perhaps beyond CAR-T and cell therapy, uh, to all advanced therapies. Uh, one, one thing we really notice when we're out here talking to parents, patients, caregivers every day, we don't really care what modality cures the patients in our life, but how do we connect that and, and use Emily's story in this transformative space to you know, educate and, and make aware uh, all of these transformative nature of these therapies. Thanks, George. And then, so how did, how did you get into this line of work? Uh, which kind of the backstory and, and why are you CEO of the, the Whitehead Foundation compared to doing something else? Sure. And another great question. And, you know, it really does start with the, the inspiration uh, of the story itself. Uh, started in cell therapy space around 2012 with a background in uh, apheresis cell collection, CGMP starting material for allogeneic. I think it, about seven or eight years ago, saw Tom at a conference uh, you know, I talk about it pretty openly, but I, I teared up in front of my staff in public and you can see the, the moving nature of Emily's story. Introduced myself to Tom, and over the years, was, as I mentioned at the beginning of this interview, was how can I do more? So it led to volunteering, helping out, gathering items for the silent auction for some events in Boston while we were in town. And then over time, that, that grew and grew. And, you know, fortuitous timing during COVID, I stepped away uh, to teach my children and spend some time with them. And, but I called Tom and said, you know, what can I really do? 
I'm not gonna work for about six to nine months. And the timing was so fortuitous. He had made this step to look at the strategic direction of the foundation and said, you know, we're really looking to grow our board and do more. And I think a week later I was on the board. And then two months later I was board chair, starting to work with the Whitehead family and the existing founding board members around what should we do next. Along that way, I co-founded a, a CDMO that spun out of the San Diego Blood Bank. So I spent some time in the nonprofit building out that with our co-founders here in San Diego. About a year after that, stepped away and jumped in to, to lead the foundation through the next level of effort here. Great. So George, yesterday we interviewed uh, Keith March from True Trials. I understand the Whitehead Foundation is also a key supporter of that initiative. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Yeah, and, and with the family commitment from the Whiteheads to see many more outcomes like Emily had received and create tens of thousands of more Emilies, there's lots of ways we can approach that. The clinical trial piece is something that's always been near and dear to the heart of the Whiteheads due to the nature of entering the trial at Penn. So, you know, there's been a, a loose collaboration over the last couple of years as True Trials was incubating under the direction of Keith March and you know, the amazing board. And over the past year, we've dug in a bit more uh, to support and, and help grow that initiative. Uh, the Whitehead Foundation has had a, a clinical trial finder for some years that literally managed by Carrie Whitehead herself through a Herculean effort to update all of these trials. But we see a way to create a better accessible resource to patients that's easy to navigate, the technology is out there to look at a map and identify and connect with these centers directly. And it's an opportunity for the Whitehead Foundation to scale its efforts and also benefit patients across the board, not just in CAR-T and oncology, but in regenerative medicine. You know, there's a clinicaltrials.gov and, and there's been a Bible for us in the cell and gene therapy space forever. And it wasn't until two years ago when I was in touch with Keith and True Trials that we realized that those are not necessarily vetted by the FDA. So providing that safe space for patients and an easy way to connect to these other centers and fill these trials faster so we can create that tens of thousands of more Emily's that our, our goal is. Well, thanks so much, George. Appreciate you stopping by the ARM studios and wishing you all the luck going forward. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you.